All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be melting down some scrap silver and turning it into a double banded inlay ring. And I'm going to show how you could basically turn your junk silver back into completely usable stuff all over again. You're gonna need some sort of way of melting it. I'm gonna be using my Smith's little torch with this long um, extended rosebud um, portion on it. And I'm gonna be using a roller mill from Pepe Tools and an ingot mold that is also from Pepe Tools. Um, I also have another one that you can make different shapes with. So if the other one doesn't work for what I'm wanting, because I want to make wire, then I will use this one and go from there. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing, anytime you do anything like this, you want ventilation. So I'm gonna be turning all that on. So I've shown how to do something similar to this in the past. And if you wanna see those, I'll make sure to link it in the video description and in the like top card thing up here. But I wanna show more of the process basically. So I'm not going to explain a lot of the stuff, but you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing. So first thing first, I'm gonna melt this down. And before I can do that, I need to prep my ingot mold. So like I said before, this particular mold is basically just for the flat sheet ingots, but you can slide this to make it into a square wire. So that's what I'm gonna do, and hopefully it works. And this particular one comes with a little vice thing like this. So I'm just gonna put that there. Make sure this is all flat. And there we go. All right, so let's see how that turned out. Uh, I poured a little too much in that one, but I couldn't really stop it in time. Also, this is all extremely hot, so uh, if you do this, make sure to either wear gloves or not touch it. Ah, uh, so I didn't pour too much. It hardens on the top. So, got this little guy down here. So, that might need to get redone. Definitely the top. All right, so there we go. So for sure, this other one would be way better for using for just flat ingots. So I can make sheet metal better with this. Um, and this one, probably better for wire. But let's get these um, cleaned up and over to the roller mill. So actually, I'm gonna remelt both of these two and then keep my other one and make this into the flat metal that's gonna be the band. All right, so that should be usable, hopefully. There we go. Little thick piece of silver that we're gonna turn into um, sheet metal. All right, so this is my uh, new roller mill if you haven't seen my last video. But um, I've made it so I can basically mount it to my desk and unmount it to move it out of the way because I have a small workbench. So I need as much room as I can get. I just thought I would show you how easy it actually was to mount and I should have done this years ago. Basically you just put those inserts into the table, line up all your bolts into them, and then I use a drill to screw all these down real quick. All right, so I have the two pieces here. I took them out of the water to cool them down and wiped them off and made sure that they're actually completely dry because you don't want to get water on these, especially brand new ones because they'll start to rust it and that's bad. So don't do that. Uh, let's start with the wire.
So after so many times of doing it, you're going to want to anneal this because it's going to work harder than every time you put it through there and smash it. But it's starting to get longer already. We're going to be making basically 16 gauge square wire out of this. So now that everything's done, I'm going to make some flat edges to use as reference points and make the rest of the parts for the ring. So for this ring, I'm going to make the band 10 millimeters thick. And then for the ring size itself, I'm just going to make this a size 10. So I just measure one of my size 10 ring sizers and then take the thickness of the metal and add that to it and then multiply everything by 3.14. So this will give us our total length of the band that we need. Also, this is technically the wrong way to do it, but it works the best for me when working with thinner metals because as you form it into a ring, it stretches a little bit, and if you made it exactly the right size, it'd be too big. So that's why I do it this way. So now that all of that is done, we have a perfect size band. I just need to clean up all the edges to make sure everything is nice and square. And then we can start folding it around the mandrel to get it its ring shape. So now that it's more ring shaped and both ends are connected together, I can solder it to make it a full ring. So after cleaning off any of the tarnish and the pickling solution, I could put it onto my mandrel and start hammering it into the proper shape and the proper size, because like I said, I undersize my rings so I can stretch them up to what they need to be. So now that I have it all the right size and nice and round, I can start filing down the outside of it to make sure that it has a uniform surface all the way around so we can put our other bands onto it. So when filing this down, I make sure to use it on a mandrel that is so beat up and ruined that it won't matter if I accidentally scratch it. And all it's really good for is holding rings to be filed down. This also could be done on a lathe in a couple seconds, but I, this video is all about doing it by hand. I'll make another video in the future showing how to do all of this on a lathe. So now that it's all uniformed, we can measure the outside of it and use that in the same math equation to figure out how big we need to make our outer bands. And once I have that info, I can scribe a line onto my wire and cut there to get the lengths that I need. So because I just made this wire, I need to anneal it because it's completely work hardened and you won't be able to really bend it too well when it's like this. So I'm just going to use some pliers that have no teeth and round these by hand because working with square wire, it likes to kind of roll on itself a little bit when you have it on a tapered mandrel and this way I can keep everything more square. So once I have all three of them done, I'm going to solder them all together to make them into actual rings. So just like before, I'm going to put them onto my mandrel and round them out to make them into perfect circles. And I want them to be as tight as possible on that center band, so I'm going to try not to stretch them to my best of my ability. So usually with these, they get a little wavy when you're hammering them on the mandrel, so I'm just basically flattening them out. So now I'm basically going to have to press fit this in there because it's such a tight fit. And then the center band is a little bit looser and I'm able to push it on with my hands, but it's still pretty tight. So once you get all of them on there, you're gonna wanna make sure all your spacings are how you want them. And because of how tight everything is, they pretty much should stay like that. 
So when it comes to soldering, I'm going to solder the outer bands first, starting with just one of them. And I'm going to put flux on it and then place a bunch of pieces of medium solder all the way around this and make sure everything flows into the crack between the inner and outer band so we have a completely solid piece. So after that, throw it into your pickling solution to clean it up and do the same thing to the other side. Alright, so now that we have both of the outer bands soldered on, we can do the last band, which is in the center. And make sure that it actually still is there from all the soldering you did and moving stuff around. Once you do, put some flux on it, and then we're going to place pieces of medium solder all the way around on the rim of it. And then heat it and solder it in place. So once everything is all soldered up, I'm going to sand down the outer sides of the ring to make everything nice and smooth. If you have any gaps there, go back and re-solder that area by adding flux and more solder. So one of the last things I needed to clean up is the inside of the band because some of the solder melted down in there and the solder joint from the original joining of the center band will be visible unless you clean it all up. So I'm going to use a radial sanding disc to cut everything down and clean that up. So that's about it for this video. Um, I wanted to show how you can make one of these by hand. And in my next video, I'll show actually inlaying some stone into this. But if you don't want to make your own, not exactly this style, but basically a single band inlay, I actually had someone contact me that makes them. And you can see, here's a bunch of them. And these are made from tungsten. So not silver like mine, but they come in all different size, or not size, of course sizes, but um, all different styles. So if you wanted to get one of these, these are from Wapiki, Wapiti? I have no idea how to pronounce the uh, person's company name, but designs. So Wapiki Designs, and I'll have links in the description and in the comments to these. But yeah, you can technically just order one of these and then you're already done and put it in lane inside of it. And like I said, these are all made from tungsten. Um, this one is basically for uh, sliding something over it and they're already all roughed up and ready for glue. So yeah, check them out and let them know that I sent you. And I might do a uh, video on these sometime soon showing how to use already made ones to put inlays into. But I think that'd be interesting for people that just don't want to make their own or don't have the time to make theirs. So that's about it. If you like this video, leave a like on it. If you want to see more stuff on how I'm going to finish this ring out or how I'm going to fill these ones in, subscribe to my channel. I try to make videos every week. And if you have any questions whatsoever on anything really, uh, feel free to leave a comment and I try to get back to all of my comments. So that's about it. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.